Hi guys, I'm Jeff with Naylor Innovations, and this is my second video. If you watched my first video, I appreciate that. If you haven't seen my first video, you might want to check it out first. Um, in this video, we're going to install my Ultimate Bag Rider on a couple rifles that's a little more involved. In my first video, I introduced my product, um, showed a quick, easy installation of it, and talked about how the use of it and the benefits of it. Um, so I highly recommend watching it. This video is going to go into a little more detail, a little more involved um, installation process on certain guns where we have to take the unit apart. So we're going to get right to it and uh, show you how to do that. Now this is a good example of when you have to take the unit apart to install it. This here is just a single shot 22 youth rifle little short fella and in this case we have to take the unit farther apart to install it. Unlike the standard length of pull most rifles which I showed in the first video you can install it quick and easy just by running that mount out the back of the rider until that rear hole is exposed and then you can just set that take your sling stud out set that on there run your sling stud back in and you're good to go. As you can see in this case that is too short. We can't get it on there because this is in the way. So we have to take it completely apart or farther apart. So I'll show you right off the bat. First thing we're going to do is remove that front screw which holds on the retainer plate. With the included 8th inch Allen wrench we'll take that screw out first. Set that aside and slide the retaining plate off. Now, everything is lubricated. There's some light grease on it, so you might want to set that on a rag or something. Don't set it on your wife's tablecloth. You might get in trouble. Um, with that retainer plate off, you can slide the mount and the adjusting rod and the knob off the rider. Set that aside. And now we'll just go ahead and thread that rod out of the mount. So at this point, we can leave that attached just for now and I'll show you how to take that a little farther apart in a minute. Now you can take your 8th inch Allen wrench we're going to remove the rear sling stud and as I talked about in my first video you'll encounter different lengths of studs uh, you might run into some issues with the fasteners with the different studs. I explained that in the first video so this one's got the nice long sling stud you won't usually have any issues with that. So we take that out. We're going to take our mount, set it on the back of the stock, reinstall that sling stud quick and easy like that. Now keep in mind this mount has a longer section towards the back, shorter section towards the front. The longer section needs to go to the back, um, the long tail to the butt, tail to the butt. Okay, long section to the back. One of the main reasons is this rear hole is counterboard to accept the square shoulder of the sling stud. Also countersunk if you want to use a flathead wood screw, that's an option also. And as far as the front hole, it's countersunk for another wood screw. Uh, that's a little more detailed. We can talk about that real quick if you want to add a second screw. On some rifles, like my hunting rifles, where I want to take the unit in hunting, I want to add that second screw to make it more permanent and more solid, more insurance. You don't have to worry about it coming loose or coming off or anything like that. Also on a couple of my long range rifles, I'm going to add the second screw just to make it permanent because I'm planning on leaving the unit attached at all times. So if you want to do that, now's a good time to do it. Uh, I'm not going to try to explain to you or show you how to install another screw or even install a wood or the sling stud if you don't have one and need to add one of those to your rifle. I'm not going to try to teach you how to do that here. That's something you need to take to your gunsmith unless you're experienced at doing that and then feel free to go ahead and do it yourself. Um, best left to your gunsmith unless you're experienced at it. Lots of videos out there, guys showing you how to do it. Some are okay, some I don't agree with, uh, but it's totally up to you if you want to attempt it yourself. Uh, you run the risk of damaging your stock if you do something wrong. I'm not going to be responsible for that. 
um, if you split your stock in half, it's not my fault. I warned you. Just take it to your gunsmith if you're not sure or not experienced at it because it, it looks very simple, and it can be, but if done improperly, you can ruin a good stock and cause yourself a lot of grief. And so, anyway, we'll move forward. And one thing to watch for on the bottom of the stock is make sure it's fairly straight. Uh, you can check it, use the side of the mount for a straight edge, and see if it sits on there flat. Um, when you set the mount on there, if there's a little dish to it on the wood, usually not a problem. If it's got a crown to it, when you set that mount on there, if it wants to rock, that could be a problem. So one way to eliminate that, say there's a gap under the back here, what you can do is just take some black vinyl electrical tape, put a layer of electrical tape, fill in the gap, set it back on there, try it. If it still rocks, maybe add a second layer of tape and just get the rock out of it. It makes it sit on there nice and flat, more secure. So a little electrical tape solve that problem if you need it. We'll set the mount on there, run our stud back in there, run it in by hand as far as you can, make sure it's started nice and straight. And take your wrench and just wiggle that around, make sure it's on keyed onto the bottom of that stock nice and straight. And snug it up. Don't have to be super tight, just good and snug. Now at this point. Add the second screw if you feel the need, if you want to do that. And what we can do is we can check and see if we can put the screw and the knob back in. We can't. There's not room for it. So we have to take the knob off. Take your included 332nd Allen wrench. Take that little set screw out. There's a little set screw holding the knob, locking it onto the adjusting rod. So take that little set screw out. I like to leave it on the wrench less chance of losing it that way. Make sure you're working over your table or your workbench and have a towel or some rags or something soft in case you drop it and it's not going to go bouncing away. If it hits the floor it'll run and hide and you'll probably never find it. That's me how I know. So we'll leave it on the wrench, set that aside and then you can just unscrew the knob off the adjusting rod. The unit is completely disassembled now. Notice there's a flat on the front of that rod that's where the set screw locks on, engages on that flat so you don't damage your threads. So now at this point, you can try to run this in from the front. Still not enough room. So with the flat towards the front, just thread it in from the back. So we'll run that up through there. Now one on, on another rifle, um, what I run into, I had to take the unit apart. It was a standard length of pull on the other rifle, but I couldn't do the quick, easy install, leaving it assembled, because from the factory, the rear sling stud was installed over an inch farther forward, so it shortened up the distance between here and here. So I had to take the unit apart to the point to where the knob was still on the rod, and then I was able to access the hole. But you know, in certain situations, you might have to just take it apart. In this case, we had to take it completely apart. Not a big deal, just two screws. So I'll run that back in there. Uh, there is some lubrication. Make sure there is lubrication on the screw or on the rod, on the mount, all sides of the mount. Um, we assemble these with some light grease inside the rails, all the mating surfaces. Uh, we like to use the Super Lube. It's a clear synthetic non-toxic grease works really well but any kind of light lubrication a light grease you want to make sure there's there's lubrication you know it just helps it uh, function easier and reduce wear so now with the flat up on the rod I'm going to run the knob back down on the end of that adjusting rod run it down there all the way and then just back it up until you see the flat through the hole you want to make sure that flat's lined up under the hole where the set screw goes. Now you're going to take your little set screw, set it over the hole, start it down in there. Run it down there a little ways and then hold the rod and then just rock that knob back and forth while you're slowly tightening that set screw and you can feel it engage on that flat. You want to make sure it's on that flat. 
once it's snugged up there, you know you're on the flat, snug it up a little bit. That's back together. Next step, slide the right around from the back. Now you notice the groove in the knob. That's where the retaining plate engages over through that groove. That's one critical area where you want to make sure you have adequate lubrication in that groove. That's probably going to get the most wear. Um, take your retaining plate, countersunk side out, slide it over the knob, engaging the slot, the groove in the knob, and then take your flat head screw, put it through the hole in the retainer plate, Get that started back in there, and then when you got grease on your fingers, it makes it a little more difficult. Get that started in there. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. I got a ball in Allen wrench. If you have these, it just makes life a little easier. Uh, you can go at it at an angle. So run that in there. Take the short arm wrench that's included. Make sure that's engaged nice and straight. Snug up that flathead screw. All reassembled, ready to go. So now we have an Ultimate Bag Rider installed on this youth rimfire rifle. And I think it's pretty handy. It's a really great training aid um, for kids, uh, youth, new shooters. You know, it's not just for kids and women either. I mean, it's for anybody that wants to and try to find the true accuracy of the rifle and try to get better, um, eliminate a variable. The, the, the main advantage of this product, it just eliminates that variable of fighting that rear bag. And a lot of us really struggle with it. My wife really was frustrated with it. So it just eliminates a variable. You can set this on a on a bag, and it, flat bags work really good. Set it down in there, work it down in there good and solid. But you can get a young person set up on the bench and get the rifle nice and solid. Just turn that knob, dial in your elevation, and it's gonna stay there. And they can have fun, be productive, build some confidence, and not be fighting that rear bag, trying to keep the elevation and trying to stay on target. It just helps a lot. Um, so there we go, that's the Ultimate Bag Rider. Uh, detailed installation, full disassembly and reassembly installed on this youth rifle. And we'll try to get some of these out there. Like I said before, we're uh, brand new to this, just getting started, working on getting a website put together, and uh, we're getting closer. And we have some of these units in stock, bagged up, ready to go. And Hopefully we can get some of these out there to you real soon and uh, let you try them out and let us know what you think. Uh, we're not taking phone calls. Uh, I've been a machinist over 38 years. I still work 50 hours a week. My wife works full time. If you, can, uh, if you want, you can send us an email. If you have any questions, at nailerinnovations at gmail.com. Uh, we will check those in the evenings and get back to you as soon as we can. And uh, we'll go from there. But really appreciate you watching. And stay tuned once we get our website up and going. Um, I got another product in the works right now. A handy little gadget I came up with that I had a need for something that didn't exist. So I made one for myself and used it. Really handy item. I made my buddy one. He really likes it. It's something I think you guys will like too. It's really simple. One of those, oh yeah, uh, why didn't I think of that? hopefully. Um, anyway, there's more products on the way. I want them coming up soon. Hopefully we get that up on the website as soon as I get some of those made. Something I think you guys will like. And uh, stay tuned. Check back. And appreciate you watching. I'll see you soon.